a collection of six stories that mark the key events in Bruce Wayne's journey from beginner crime fighter to Dark Knight. The film opens in a graffiti-covered abandoned building. A local kid glides on his skateboard as the rest of his friends show up. The first of his friends tells him a story that happened at the pier. He was riding his skateboard and crashed into a loose criminal. The criminal is about to hit him with his skateboard but a shadowy figure steps in the way. They fight for a moment but the criminal gets away and the shadowy figure disappears into the darkness. The second friend to get there tells a similar story. She was riding her skateboard in the middle of Gotham City and got stopped by a cop. While standing there, a criminal comes flying above the street on a jetpack. The police draw their weapons as the criminal takes a hostage. War is about to break loose when a giant bat-like figure comes flying from above. The creature saves the woman but him and the criminal fight to the pier. The criminal escapes once again. The last friend to get there has his own story about Batman. He was sightseeing on a skyscraper downtown. The tourist and him calmly looking out at the skyline when suddenly the elevator doors explode. A criminal walks out from the smoke and demands everyone's valuables. The situation seems grim, but hope is restored when a robotic Batman comes crashing down from the sky. The two fight and the criminal takes off on a jetpack. Hearing all of these amazing stories makes the kid feel like he's missing out on the action. The group of friends shares a laugh, but it's cut short when the criminal from their stories crashes through the window. Following him is a wounded Batman. The kids are startled but watch Batman in awe. The criminal throws a smoke bomb, filling the room. He's about to take out Batman but gets swiftly knocked out by the skater kid. Batman picks up the criminal and puts his hand on the kid's shoulder, telling him he owes him one. At Gotham PD, the major crimes unit awaits orders from Lieutenant Gordon. At this time, the crime boss Maroney is locked in a turf war with the rival gang led by the Russian. The door to Gordon's office is shrouded by Batman's silhouette. Batman disappears from the room as Gordon calls in detectives Allen and Ramirez. The two detectives get tasked with transporting the jetpack-wearing criminal, the man in black, to Arkham Asylum. Ramirez leaves the room after the briefing but Alan stays. He expresses his distrust toward Batman, but Gordon tells him he will learn to trust him. Wanting to pursue the gang war instead, Alan leaves the room in frustration. The two arrive on Arkham Island which houses the asylum. They are told that the whole island is asylum grounds, and anyone walking around is a criminal, not a citizen. After making the drop-off Alan tells Ramirez that he doesn't want to run errands for a vigilante, and plans on leaving the major crimes unit. This upsets Ramirez who slams on the brakes. She reminds Alan that everyone in the MCU is handpicked by Gordon for a reason and asks him not to walk away from that. While the two are talking, multiple vans come screeching to a stop nearby. The Russian and his gang get out of the vans. As this is happening, a different set of vans followed by a modified car, owned by the Maroni gang, stop on the other side of the detectives. The gangs argue over turf before unleashing a hailstorm of bullets toward one another. The detectives now find themselves trapped in their car in the crossfire. The Russian yells to one of his goons who throws him a rocket launcher. He aims and shoots the missile at the detective's car, destroying it. The second before the explosion Alan gets whisked away and safely lands on a nearby rooftop. As he stands up he sees Batman jump down from in front of him. Now on the ground, Batman takes out the remaining members of the Russian gang. Ramirez wakes up in a daze but is quickly taken hostage by Moroni. Both are terrified as they look at Batman standing atop the flaming wreckage of the detective's car. Maroney tells Batman not to move or else. Alan finds his way down and points his gun toward Maroney. In the blink of an eye, Batman rushes over and takes the gun from Maroney ending the situation. Batman recognizes the badge of the detective and shows his respect for the MCU. He tells them Gordon is a good judge of character before leaving. Underground Wayne Tower, Lucius Fox, and Bruce Wayne discuss new technology. Lucius noticed part of the satellite they are using to spy on the rival gangs is destroyed. While investigating why this happened, he finds out how to harness electromagnetic pulses. He shows Bruce a prototype of the final product. The device that generates electromagnetic pulses will be attached to the bat suit and be used to deflect small arms ammunition. Bruce watches in amazement, thinking about the different ways this can help him while crime fighting. The next night Maroney and his gang are on their boat searching for the Russian. Their boat gets remotely hijacked by Batman who crashes it into the Russian's boat. The two gangs draw their weapons for another firefight. Batman swoops in and takes out everyone in a matter of seconds. Everyone gets thrown overboard except for a younger gang member who is knocked to the ground. Not having enough evidence to put anyone in jail, he orders the two crime bosses to remain in their territory. The younger gang member watches while Batman talks to the criminals. A gang member suddenly springs out from below deck and shoots at Batman. The bullet is instantly deflected into the younger gang member's shoulder. Batman jumps over to the boat and knocks out the criminal in one punch. Now filled with shock and regret, Batman picks up the younger gang members and rushes to the hospital. They arrive but are met with resistance as police notice the weapon on the gang member. Batman calms the situation and saves the life of the young man. 
The next day Bruce goes to see Lucius. Bruce tells him that he can't use the electromagnetic device. To save the city he must put his own life on the line, not anyone else's. The major crimes unit gets called to a church downtown Gotham. A screaming man tells police of an eight-foot-tall lizard man covered in scales that abducted Cardinal O'Fallon and brought him down to the crypts. The detectives, along with Gordon, follow the long and dangerous corridors leading to the crypts. Gordon stops as Batman descends from the ceiling to talk. Gordon tells Batman they found traces of a weaponized hallucinogen and the two conclude that this is the work of Jonathan Crane Aka the Scarecrow. Batman gives Gordon an earpiece and says he'll follow the trail of the lizard man, but Gordon doesn't believe that part of the story. Batman tells Gordon an urban legend of a cannibal and wants to investigate. Batman follows deeper into the crypt and abandons subway tunnels. He eventually comes across an encampment of homeless people and asks them if they have seen a monster. They tell Batman the story of Killer Croc, an orphan boy who was thrown into the sewers and changed by toxic waste. They point him in the right direction and Batman trudges on. Batman now finds himself in an old railway, coffins lay about completely left behind. This part of the Undercity was a pneumatic system used for transporting bodies to cemeteries, but because of that, is now filled with flammable methane gas. While exploring, Gordon tells Batman they found information on Killer Croc. He's an inmate known as Waylon Jones and a former test subject of Scarecrows. Batman continues to search for clues when, out from the shallow water, bursts the monster Killer Croc. He catches Batman by surprise and bites his shoulder, causing some of his fear toxin blood to transfer into Batman. With his vision getting worse, Batman fights off Killer Croc and manages to scare him away. He continues down the disgusting sewers determined to catch the Scarecrow. He finds his way beneath the eastern reservoir where Scarecrow waits with an army of Arkham inmates and homeless, all infected with his fear toxin. An injured Batman descends and eliminates each member of the army with haste. With pain settling in, Batman grabs Cardinal O'Fallon. The two search for a way out when Batman notices the methane gas above them and shoots a rocket into it. The gas ignites causing an explosion, pipes, and metal to come crashing down on this lair. Batman and O'Fallon manage to escape through a drain pipe. Gordon's helicopter comes to the rescue, but Batman returns to the sewers. A badly injured Batman walks through the sewers and collapses due to pain. He temporarily patches himself up as he remembers his time in India, volunteering for the relief effort and looking to join the Fakirs for enlightenment. He remembers being denied entry into the Fakirs but pointed toward a woman named Cassandra. Although knowing enlightenment, Cassandra was not a Fakir. She agrees to help Bruce master his pain. Batman tells Alfred to follow his coordinates and meet him out of the sewers. He remembers more of his time in India. Cassandra spends several months showing Bruce how to master his pain by standing on hot coals and sleeping on a bed of needles without reacting. She tells Bruce that she is seen as an outcast because she is not Fakir. One night, three young men come by to harass Cassandra. She steps up to them ready to fight as they lay the first blow. They break a wooden plank over her head without the smallest indication of pain. They seem shocked as Bruce steps in between them, demonstrating his ability to master his pain and eliminate the men. Witnessing this, Cassandra tells Bruce he must be sent away. He has learned what he came here for and it's time to go. She says his pain is beyond her control and maybe beyond his as well. Batman continues to painfully walk through the sewers and up to the surface. He feels relief as he sees the light of a storm drain and hears cars. He falls backward in exhaustion as he looks up through the grates, seeing the lights of the city from the lowest point he's been. He adjusts himself as he finds a revolver in the garbage underneath him. He keeps moving garbage and finds another gun. One by one more guns turn up. He shakes with rage and disgust looking at the dozens of weapons laying around. Alfred eventually finds Batman, getting him out of the sewer and confiscating the weapons. On a tropical island, a criminal by the name of Deadshot is hired by the Russian to assassinate a person of importance in Gotham City. Catching word of this, the Gotham City police put a 24-hour watch on Gordon, expecting him to be the victim. They bring him out of the PD and put him into a police-escorted car. Batman follows the car watching vigilantly for Deadshot. While patrolling, Alfred notifies Batman that Gordon's car will be passing under a bridge as a train goes by. With no one on the bridge, Batman suspects Deadshot will be firing from the train itself. While gliding beside it, he realizes a train is coming from the opposite direction and is forced out of the way. A door swings open and Deadshot aims while aboard the 60-mile-an-hour train. He aims at Gordon and takes the shot. The bullet travels out of the train, through a chain-linked fence, and flies down the highway. It's about to burst through the window of the car when Batman flies in and stops the bullet with his hand. Batman grapples onto the train and follows Deadshot. Deadshot says this is all a part of the plan, revealing Batman as the actual target. He takes off his overcoat and arms his wrist-mounted machine guns, unloading rounds into the sky as Batman glides toward him. A tunnel forces Batman to land on the train and confront Deadshot up close. They battle on the train, both throwing out everything they have. Most of Batman's gadgets prove useless as they are shot out of the air. His body armor also proves useless up close as he takes a shot to the arm. 
he hangs off the side of the train while Deadshot approaches. Deadshot walks over to the exhausted Bat ready to celebrate victory, but notices he isn't there. He turns around and sees Batman running toward him. With expert reflexes Deadshot takes aim and fires. Batman outmaneuvers the assassin and glides through the air. Using his razor-sharp wrist spines, Batman slices through the metal on Deadshot's arm destroying his guns. With one final punch, Batman knocks him out. Alfred patches Bruce up at Wayne Manor. Bruce is concerned about what he is doing but Alfred reassures him he has a deeper purpose. The bat signal shines through the window as Bruce's body fills with life, ready to become Batman once more.